In the aftermath of President Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis, officials are concerned about the impact it could potentially have on national security. They're worried that adversaries like Russia, Iran, and North Korea could try to exploit the moment during an already tumultuous time in the United States. Joining us now, former State Department senior advisor Lauren Baer, who has more insight on the implications of the president's positive coronavirus test. Lauren, the president's age and weight do make him a higher risk for complications due to the coronavirus. But uh, as you may have heard me say before, if anybody is ever receiving the best medical attention that there ever was on coronavirus, it is President Trump at Walter Reed right now. So. Explain for our viewers how much of a national security threat are we facing? Give us a little bit of a reality check here. Certainly. Well, well, first of all, I'd like to start by saying that I wish both the president uh, and the first lady and all others on his senior staff who've been affected uh, a full and speedy recovery. Frankly, any time the president's health or well-being is threatened, it poses a national security risk to the United States. The United States has many allies in the world. It also has many adversaries, countries like you mentioned, Russia, Iran, North Korea. And what those adversaries seek to do is take advantage uh, of our vulnerabilities of any perceptions of weakness. Uh, President Trump uh, being ill, being in Walter Reed, will certainly be perceived of that way, as would uh, any illness among additional members of the president's uh, senior staff or other senior high-ranking uh, government officials. The, the, the question is, is there a vulnerability that could be exploited uh, in the interest of these countries' ill will? And, and that's exactly what I want to ask you, because we do know that countries like China and Russia um, have been trying to uh, sow discord, particularly uh, in advance of our election, with this additional um, chaos that we're facing as a country right now, um, as, as the president himself is at a hospital. Is there, is there an additional opportunity that this poses um, for these countries, and are they likely to take it, or is, are we always at the same level of risk because they will always try to exploit whatever uh, opportunities exist? Uh, we, we are not always at the same level of risk, and I think our adversaries will be assessing the situation here in the United States and watching it closely for any opportunities to exploit. What's important to remember here is that when we talk about national security risks, uh, we aren't just talking uh, about active warfare. Uh, we're also talking about things like cybersecurity risks. We're also talking about things like disinformation campaigns. Uh, we know, for example, that Russia uh, is seeking to interfere in the 2020 elections in the same way that they sought to interfere in the uh, 2016 uh, elections. And, and many of the ways that they did that um, was by taking advantage of uncertainty in the United States, uh, by spreading uh, disinformation, and by using that uh, to try to create weakness. So I, I think this is cause uh, for all of us uh, to, to, to be on high alert, uh, to have our guard up. That's a very good point. In particular, uh, uh, social media networks have already started going crazy with conspiracy theories. Much better to set those aside and uh, and recognize that a lot of times that is foreign interference uh, trying to sow discord. Um, Lauren, you were also uh, a senior advisor at the Department of State during the Ebola crisis. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about that experience, what precautions were taken then during Ebola um, as a guide for understanding what should be done now. Obviously, a, a very big difference with the with the president himself being affected, but it still provides some level of a roadmap for how our country ought to operate. Um, well, certainly. And, and I think the important thing to recognize from what we learned from the Ebola crisis is the Obama administration recognized right away that Ebola was not only a public health threat, 
uh, but it was also an economic threat to the United States. Uh, and it was also a national security threat potentially to the United States if it got out of hand. Uh, that's why it was taken so seriously. And that's why the Obama administration's approach from the outset uh, was led by science. Um, I think that there's a lesson to be learned uh, from Ebola. And if there's a lesson to be learned uh, from the president of the United States himself being sick right now with coronavirus, it's that the science needs to lead us in times of public health crisis. Um, no one is immune, uh, even with rapid response testing like the White House had. The president himself was vulnerable and he was able to get sick. Uh, that has implications for all of our security and well-being here in the United States. All right, Lauren Baer, thank you. Thank you.